Welcome to the Psy Guys. On today's episode, electrolysis. Hi, I'm Adam. And I'm Ryan. We're the Psy Guys, and today we're going to be showing you electrolysis. Breaking the bonds of oppression. You mean chemistry. Yeah, that works too. What we're going to be doing today is adding energy in the form of electricity into a compound to break its chemical bonds, returning it into its base components. This is called electrolysis. The equipment you're going to need for this experiment is... A 9 volt battery. A couple of spoons to act as leads to conduct the electricity from the battery into our solution. A Pyrex beaker, this one's volumetric. Alternatively, you can use a, another Pyrex-like product from your kitchen store we recommend something with a little bit of heat resistant and something separate from what you cook with just so you're not going to get cross-contamination. Next we'll show you the ingredients you're going to need. Because water has a really low conductivity, the first ingredient we're going to have to get is salt. <sighs> to increase the conductivity so that a 9 volt battery will cause the reaction we need, we're going to recommend you use kosher salt because it's only NaCl. Secondly, the solution at the end of this will be basic, so we're going to have to neutralize it for disposal, and we're going to recommend you use vinegar. The last ingredient we're going to need is distilled water. We're using distilled water rather than tap water because that way we know exactly what's in it, and we won't have any impurities messing with our experiment. And science is all about controlling your parameters. Now before we get started, you're going to have to don your safety equipment. The safety equipment we need for this experiment are thick rubber gloves, a pair of goggles, and an apron or lab coat. Even though we're only dealing with salt water in this experiment, the reaction can create lye, which is an extreme base. So to protect against spills and splashes, wear your gloves and goggles. The first step in setting up this experiment is to mix together the salt water solution. The ideal ratio of salt water for electrolysis is 10% salt and 90% water. This is best calculated by weight. What this means is for every 90 grams of water, you need to mix in 10 grams of salt. We've measured out 540 grams of water. Once you've measured your water, pour it into your glass container. Next, measure and add your salt into the container. We've measured out 60 grams of salt. This gives our solution a total weight of 600 grams. Now stir your solution until as much of the salt as possible has been dissolved into the water. This step may take a few minutes. The next step is best done with a partner. Take your spoons or your leads and submerge them into the water. Make sure they're not touching. Next, press the battery terminals against the ends of the spoons. Make sure that only one spoon is touching each terminal. As soon as the batteries touch the spoons, you should see bubbles forming on the spoons. These bubbles are filled with hydrogen and chlorine gases. If the spoons touch, you will create a short circuit and the reaction will stop. If you separate the spoons and the battery is still attached, the reaction should continue. It is important to note that chlorine gas is toxic if inhaled, and lye, a corrosive alkaline, can burn your skin. The amounts produced in this experiment are very small. Even so, you should always do this experiment in a well-ventilated space or outside while wearing eye protection and heavy rubber gloves. You'll notice the longer our reaction continues, the water will turn from a clear color to yellow and then to green and brown. Let's look at this reaction a little closer. One 8 ounce cup of water contains in the neighborhood of 7.91 times 10 to the power of 24 molecules of water. That comes out to be around this many molecules of H2O in every cup. This puts into perspective how very small molecules are. Now water is a poor conductor of electricity. This is where salt comes in. Salt is a type of substance called an electrolyte, which, when dissolved in water, increases the conductivity of the water and makes it easier for electricity to move through it. Now our solution has tons of water, sodium, and chlorine floating about. When we add energy in the form of electricity to our now conductive solution, it causes the bonds in the water molecules to break. All of these ions are now floating in our solution, which leaves them free to create new bonds. Sodium joins up with oxygen and hydrogen to create sodium hydroxide, or lye. This leaves chlorine and hydrogen, which bond with like ions, forming chlorine and hydrogen gases, and they float out of our solution into the air. The bubbles forming on the spoons contain these gases. If we look at the formula in this reaction, it looks like this. 
As you can see in these reactions, nothing is created or lost. Everything is used. The things we started out with are the same as what we finished with. Just jumbled around a little bit based on how they like to join together. That's basic chemistry. The change in color in our reaction is because we are using metal spoons, and they are causing the creation of a precipitate or solid oxide in our container. This is an unknown variable in our experiment, because we don't know what the spoons are made of. In commercial labs, they use graphite leads because they don't cause the creation of an oxide. If we were to use graphite pencils that were sharpened on both ends and then touch the battery to them, this would eliminate the creation of the oxide and remove the unknown variable. Once you're done watching your experiment, disconnect the battery from the end of the spoons. Then, remove your spoons from your liquid solution. You can wash these with soap and water. So what we've done is broken the bonds between hydrogen and oxygen in the water and sodium and chlorine in the salt. What was produced is hydrogen and chlorine gases which escape into the air, lye and an oxide which you can see as a precipitate. Because lye is produced in this reaction and lye is a very strong base, we're going to have to neutralize our solution before we can properly dispose of it. This is where the vinegar comes in. Vinegar is an acid. Pour vinegar into your solution and it'll bring the pH down to a neutral level which is safe for disposal. Turn your water on in your sink and let it run for a few seconds. Then, pour your solution directly down the drain of the sink. Wash your container out and pour that as well down the drain. Let your water run for a few more seconds to make sure that our entire solution is thoroughly washed down the drain. So that's electrolysis. If you have any questions related to electrolysis or any other science topic, throw them in the comments below and we'll try to answer them as soon as possible. Make sure to subscribe, to like us on Facebook, and follow us on Twitter. As we release other videos, they'll show up over on this side, somewhere over here. Thanks for watching. Bye. Here at SciGuys, we're always curious how experiments turn out, so if you do these experiments at home, record them and submit them to us as a video reply to this video. But remember, always get your parents' permission before you submit any videos to YouTube.